Hey guys, welcome back to Cocal Knives. I've got a I've got a good one for you guys today. We're going to be doing a full review of the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio. Uh, the one that I've got here is in carbon fiber. Uh, I've wanted one of these knives ever since they came out. Basically, um, just everything about the design. I I really love the way it looks. Um, and like I said, I just I wanted one super bad as soon as they came out. So. Once it, it came time to pull the trigger on one, I decided to spend a, a little bit of extra and go for the carbon fiber version. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look and check out the technical specs here. All right, guys, so we're just going to be taking a look at the, the specs here that I care about. Uh, what we're looking at is a blade length of 2.875 inches, uh, the cutting the cutting edge, however, is 2.5. That is M390 steel. Uh, satin finish on this one, they also do offer it in stone wash. Uh, blade thickness of 0.12 inches. Nothing uh, crazy out of the ordinary there. Uh, handle material on this, carbon fiber. Um, they also have uh, two different micarta options and a G10 option as well. Uh, Weight on this is 3.8 ounces, so in a acceptable range. It's a liner lock, as you can see. The pocket clip is a wire pocket clip that's reversible for uh, tip up carry only, left or right hand. And uh, yeah, thumb hole deployment or flipper. Both work equally as well. Pretty nice. So. Getting uh, technical specs out of the way here, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the blade. All right, guys, so taking a good look at the blade here. Uh, for me, I really like the looks and the design of the blade. Um, it's one of my favorite parts about it, honestly. Um, if you guys don't already know, the Giant Mouse products are designed by Jens Anso and Jesper Voxnes. Um, they both, you know, separately do an incredible job, you know, on their own. But uh, the stuff that they've been putting out with Giant Mouse is uh, honestly, it's super amazing stuff. So uh, the blade here, I would say, is uh, pretty Vox. So that's you. the blade shape you would see here is pretty typical of the stuff that he usually puts out. A uh, huge fan of a lot of his work. So naturally... I'm a huge fan of this blade design and blade shape. Um, it's M390 steel as well, which is a, a very good thing. I uh, really like that blade steel. Uh, it's pretty killer in almost every category. Uh, even for the, the price range here, getting something like this isn't, you know, it's not too bad for, um, you know, this blade steel, all things considered for, uh, you know, for the carbon fiber version, the 190. So. Uh, anytime you can get a, a good M390 blade for not crazy expensive is a good thing. Um, you get jimping up on the far, far up on the spine here. So when you're choking up on the blade, you get that little bit of extra grip here just so you don't uh, slip it and sliding all over the blade. Uh, nothing while you're holding the blade normally, but you get such a good handle on you know, such a good grip on the handle, and we'll get into that in the next section here, but uh, I would say it's not needed as much. If you really feel the need to, you can, you know, put your thumb up like that. I mean, if that's if you feel like you really need um, a really secure, hard grip on the knife, but not a huge deal. It's still there regardless. Uh, speaking of, you get this uh, forward choil here, so um, if you need to choke up on the knife, it is an option. It is really comfortable. Um, typically for me, uh, if, if I am holding it in that position, I typically don't put the rest of my hand all the way forward either. Uh, I usually hang back a little bit and that's just because if I come up too far, I feel like I'm getting a little cramped up here and my finger gets a pretty close to that edge there, almost a little bit too close, but, um, you know, it still feels natural to hold it like this, you know, you still get a good handle on it. Uh, I like the grind. A nice high flat grind is uh, always not only looks 
nice, but is very functional, especially in something that you're going to be carrying as an EDC blade. Um, and then speaking to that as well, the blade's not incredibly thick. Um, like I said, it's right in that range that's very, you know, pretty typical. So um, no complaints there. Uh, you know, in fact, having the blade be an average thickness with a, a higher grind on a, not a super broad blade, but it's, uh, you know, a little bit taller than some, uh, makes a pretty good slicer. Uh, you know, this isn't particularly thin at the edge, I would say, but uh, it's still a good slicer nonetheless. Uh, as far as opening options, like I said, you get the thumb hole and the flipper tab. Um, work pretty well. Uh, flip ring, I would say, is uh, more geared towards push button and not, uh, you know, you could light switch it, but it just requires a little bit of conscious effort to do so. Um, you know, it's not impossible. You can see that there as opposed to the push button method is much more uh, reliable, I would say. Um, and then finally, the, the blade finish. Um, I like the satin finish. Uh, I think it was the only one available when I purchased mine. Um, but they also do have this in stone wash. So I just opted for, you know, the typical satin. But uh, if you're a huge fan of stone wash as well, that can be available too, depending on what's in stock when you decide to purchase this guy. But uh, yeah, with the blade out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the handle. All right, guys, so taking a closer look at the handle of this guy, uh, I think any time you get into a blade that is less than three inches overall, it can be a little weird. And I mean that in the way of, you know, the ergonomics, um, holding the knife, you know, feeling like you've got a good grip on it. Uh, in this case, it's good. So you can see it's not like a typical full four finger grip where, you know, usually the pinky is in like this range you would see where you would have like a whole huge grip on the knife. But instead, you still get, you know, this little ramp coming back here. It still feels really comfortable, really secure. Um, your fingers fall in the right place with just enough space. And I don't wouldn't say my hands are huge or anything. I got kind of some sausage fingers, but um, you know, if you've got big hands, maybe it would be on the small side. But for me, it's I mean, just barely enough space. Um, if you really, really are cramped, you could just always carry it in this choked up position. Then you got more than enough room. But uh, yeah, even even. Holding it here in the back position, it's still still really comfortable, really ergonomic. Um, love the layout of the handle. So uh, choked up or you know back here, it's it's a good time. Um, speaking of the handle material, the carbon fiber, um, you know, it's sometimes it can be hard to capture how good carbon fiber looks on the camera like this and not you know in real life. But it looks like it's picking up that carbon fiber pretty well. Uh, it looks great. Um, it's uh, contoured so you don't get that typical carbon fiber print pattern that you always see um, you get you know you see multiple layers it looks great um, it's not you know polished but it's not really matte so you get kind of a, a pretty decent you know texturing and also look so uh, yeah overall I really like the way the carbon fiber looks I can't speak to the other handle materials, of course, because I don't have it. Um, I was really eyeing the Micarta one when when that one came out. So, um, you know, maybe maybe I'll grab one of those too. But, uh, you know, in my experience so far with the carbon fiber, it looks great. It feels great. It's not slippery. Um, I wouldn't say it's grippy, but you still get a good traction on it. Um, speaking to the lock, it's just a typical liner lock. Uh, I will say... Uh, until your fingers get used to it a little bit, that jimping there that you see on the lock bar uh, can feel a little aggressive at first. Um, or maybe that was me just, you know, fiddling with the knife so much when I got it, I just worked my fingers raw. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. But um, I would say, you know, at this point, I'm 
fairly used to it. So not a not a big deal now, but like I said, it, at least in my experience, it can feel a little a little harsh at first. Um, pocket clip is great. It's a little bit seems like a little bit of a thicker gauge um, wire than like you would see with Spyderco, for example. Just throwing that out as an example of a, another popular uh, you know wire pocket clip design. Um, I like it. It doesn't come up too high, so it doesn't, you know, snag on things as much. Um, and then, you know, typically like you always see, it's got the little slots in there. So there's no, you know, wiggle or anything like that. I mean, you get the little bit of bend from the wire, but uh, it's not going to, you know, get jacked up on you if that screws a little loose or whatever. Uh, lanyard hole, if, uh, if that's what you're into, <laughs> Not, it's not something I typically do, but um, there's a tube with it too, so it's not just totally exposed there through the handles. Uh, knife is built with standoffs, no backspacers, so flow through construction. Um, stainless steel liners, uh, they are not skeletonized. Give you guys a little bit of a peek in there. No skeletonizing on the liners. Um, not a huge deal. Um, you know, the for the the blade length it might be uh maybe a little bit on the heavier side but i don't really notice it as much and plus weight's not something that i usually care about anyways so it's not a huge deal to me but uh yeah 3.8 ounces is not crazy so i'm not going to criticize them for not skeletonizing the liners would it have been nice yeah sure of course but the fact that they're not doesn't bother me one bit uh hardware on the knife i like that the um, the freaking screws here for the pocket clip on each side and that also hold the scale on up here and down here are the same size these look a little bit smaller so you don't notice them as much so it gives it a little bit of uh, symmetry there uh, looks pretty good you know you don't always need decorative pivots um, so yeah that's nice uh, one thing that you know I know I brought this up in my unboxing video when I first held the knife it seemed a little thick you know this way um, I still feel like that's the case it's it isn't that thick but for how short it is and how compact the knife is it feels a little bit you know thicker than the normal I guess but you know not so much that it feels weird to carry it or anything so um, you know, again, worth mentioning. Want to, you know, full disclosure here. Um, I think that about wraps it up for me on the handle portion. Uh, you know, with that out of the way, now we're going to go talk about action and fit and finish. Getting into action and fit and finish here. Uh, pretty interesting stuff as far as as action goes. Uh, you have the thumb hole opening. That works uh, better than I thought it was going to. Uh, it's one of those things where you have to push kind of out more than up. But once you get it, it it works really well. The you know it's sharp enough to grip your thumb when you use it. But uh, you know, if, of course, it's not you know too sharp like you know one of the cases that I can think of off the top of my head. This original CRKT Pilar or Pilar, however you want to pronounce it, um, also designed by Vox, by the way. Um, that thumb hole was super sharp when I got it, enough for me to want to take a file and just just touch it so it wasn't super sharp. Uh, not the case here, of course. I wouldn't expect it to be with the knife of uh, this price range, quality, etc. Um, so thumb hole works a lot better than I thought. Um, the flipper is, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier in the video. Uh, works best in a uh, push button form. The you can light switch it, but like I said, it it just takes a little bit more of a conscious effort. Uh, it's not one thing you can just you know just do it on a whim and it just goes every time. Uh, if you always want to light switch it, sometimes it may not you know engage. And of course, I'm doing that to emphasize it, but it still happens like that. Push button, of course, is uh, obviously more forceful and 
almost always deploys the blade, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, as far as uh, detent goes, I would say it's uh, on the heavy side of medium. So it's not quite uh, super medium, like right in the perfect range. But, um, you know, I've said this before in multiple videos. I prefer a detent to be more on the heavy side than the light side just to be safe. So, um, again, not, not too much to where you feel like you're killing your finger here. But um, enough to deploy the blade when you, uh, when you push button that flipper tab. Um, and it's not, the blade is not fall shut. So, um, you know, don't expect any super crazy amount of, of action here, but uh, it's still smooth. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, fit, fit and finish. That's what we're getting into next. Had a slight brain fart there. Uh, fit and finish is good. I feel like um, on some parts of the carbon fiber um, could have been finished uh, just a tad better. Um, but, you know, overall it is not bad at all. I would imagine contouring the G10 like that is not always easy. I don't have a lot of knives that have carbon fiber like this to compare it to. So um, I, I apologize for that. But... Um, you know, good starting point for me to kind of get a good comparison for others. Um, blade centering was fully centered when I got it after using it, breaking it in a little bit more. Um, it's just favoring the lock side just a hair. Uh, not enough to have me alarmed, but um, I'm not sure if it's the way that it sets in with the detent that makes it sink a little bit more to that side or... Uh, you know, I've never noticed that with any of my other knives in the past that I can, you know, say, but, um, you know, again, thought I would mention it to get all the good and all the bad in it. So, uh, after breaking it in slight, slight blade centering, you know, to one way, but, um, you know, not enough to make me feel concerned about it. So, uh, there we go there. Um. Other than that, there's, there's no issues with the fit and finish at all. The The knife is put together fantastically, and I'm very pleased with it, you know, even at this price range. So, um, you know, for the sake of keeping the video a little bit shorter, let's just go ahead and move on to uh, my overall thoughts on the knife and my final statements, and we'll shut it down. All right, guys. So my overall thoughts on the knife, my final statements. I'm going to keep this pretty brief because I think the video has gone on long enough, but um, I'll say my piece here and we'll shut it down. The, the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio, I feel is a fantastic EDC choice. Um, it lives up to all the expectations I had and I feel like, you know, at least in my opinion, as far as, you know, all things considered, you know, price, materials, construction, I feel like this is one of the best options that you can pick for a strictly EDC knife. Um, just the size, you get, you know, if you're a thumb opening guy or flipper guy, you, you have both options. Um, sorry about no tip down carry, but I love the pocket clip. I love the way that it carries. It's, you know, relatively deep carry. Um, you still have a, a lanyard hole if that's really what you like. Um, fantastic blade steel with, uh, with just good design and ergonomics and a decent weight. Uh, price is also pretty darn good. Uh, the carbon fiber version is $190. You can get the other, um, OD Green, Micarta, and G10 for 175, I believe. I'm not quite totally sure on the price of the newer natural Micarta that's out, but I want to say it's in that same kind of price range. But uh, for the price and what you're getting, it's fantastic as a just a good EDC blade. Don't expect this to do a, a crazy amount else other than everyday stuff, but 
strictly talking as an EDC blade, which is what I do here on the channel, this is such a good option. Um, I'm trying not to be biased here because I really like, you know, the design, everything I've like kind of hyped myself up about it, but just even trying to look past that and just looking at what I have here in my hands, um, it is truly a fantastic choice. Um, kudos to everybody involved making this knife. I seriously, it, it's a great knife. And for the price, it's, it's sweet, man. If you guys haven't picked one up already, definitely um you know if if you got the funds to pick one up and are you know in the market for a smaller like a subcompact edc definitely pick one up it it will live up to your expectations and maybe even more so that's all i gotta say about it it is great i love it i can't it's hard to not carry this thing um you know, for those of you that followed me on Instagram, you know, when I first got this thing, I just kept posting pictures of it. I just, I didn't want to not carry it. So, um, that's what I think about it. I love it. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, making it to the end of this somewhat longer video, <laughs> but, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, uh, if you're new or returning and haven't done so yet. Also, hit my Instagram link in the description box. Follow me on Instagram, too. Um, just get some cool everyday pics of knives and some behind-the-scenes shots. And uh, with all of that out of the way, I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you.